Hello, welcome to another Table in the Wilderness. Pull up a chair and join me as I share God's Word. I'm Steve. Join me as we have another discussion concerning what God's Word has to say. And now about five days ago, four or five days ago, I got a text message on Facebook. Let me back up a little bit. It was about December, November or December of last year, I started getting lots and lots of friend requests on Facebook. And now I have 2,500 friends, more than I have here on YouTube as subscribers. And a lot of these are from Pakistan, India, and different countries in Africa. I've discussed this a little bit in a few of my videos. And a lot of them are seeking help because they are orphanages and ministries who seek to help the poor. And this one woman, she was a woman, she, was, she said she's an evangelist and she helps a ministry in, has a ministry in Pakistan to help orphans and widows. And she asked me for money. And I helped her to find a, another ministry uh, that helps other ministries in poor areas and get them Bibles and get them food and these kinds of things. And then she said she wanted money right away. And she said, if you don't give me money, the children will not forgive you. I'm like, I can't believe this. So I said, well, the Bible says in Matthew, Jesus said that if you do not forgive those who, who have sinned against you, then the Father will not forgive you. I says, if you're teaching the children to not forgive, then you shouldn't be operating in ministry. And this is what caused me to want to preach this mes message today. It's a message that I have spoken of um, walking in God's will, walking God's ways, but I haven't de dedicated a message to it. So that's what we're going to do today. So if you seek to be blessed by God, and I'm not talking about financial blessings, although it could include financial blessings, but if you want to if you're interested in financial blessings and lots of money, I would recommend you see my video here where I talk about that. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about how God can bless you, your health, uh, grant you what you need and where you need to go. Yes, there might be material blessings in it. For example, for me to do this ministry, I need a camera. So God had to bless me with a camera. So yes, there are physical blessings involved. But it's not speaking about having lots of money, but being blessed by God and walking in His will and in His ways. So let's continue with this message. And so we can have an understanding as if you're not walking in God's wills and God's ways, you will not be blessed. Okay, let's start in Matthew 7. We're going to read 21 through 23. And forgive me if I'm swatting around. There's a lot of bugs here. Uh, spring is here. Leaves are here. Uh, wonderful weather. But the bugs here, I did not bring bug spray. I will next time. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is not salvation. This is entering into the kingdom, okay? This is not about salvation, folks. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Let's read that again, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name, then I will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So Jesus is saying there are some people who have done works, works for God, but they were not in the Father's will, and Jesus did not know them, and they were living in sin. You depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Okay? So how can you know the will of God? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, give your life to God. For you have to give your, you don't just serve him on Saturday or Sunday or any other day of ministry. You have to serve him with your whole life. The important part here also is verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, in order to prove by you what is that good and pleasing and perfect will of God. So you have to renew your mind to know God's will. And how do you renew your mind? Well, let's learn about that. Ephesians 5, 26 through 27. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word 
that he might present it to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that, should, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So it is the word of God that cleanses us, renews our mind so that we can know God's word and God's will. By knowing God's word, we will know God's will. Okay? We have to renew our thought processes because we've been living in this world. We were born into this world. We have to stop thinking like the world and start thinking like God. And how do we do that? With his word. His word. It renews us. James 1, 17 through 25. Every good gift. You want blessings from God? You want gifts from God? Not necessarily material things, but yes, material things. But not to heap on yourself and your lust. Okay, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and is from comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth with the word of truth for us to be certain first fruit of his creatures. So to be a first fruit of his creatures, we have to be birthed through the word. Okay? Yes, we believe in Christ for our salvation, but we also have to be born again. Being born again is walking in this, this work that Jesus did for us. Galatians 2.20, we've been crucified in Christ. Okay, Let's continue. Verse 21, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So once again, how do you save your mind? How do you renew your mind? It is with the Word of God. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your, we have spirit, soul, and body. So many in the church don't know the difference in spirit and soul, okay? When you believe in Jesus, that he died for your sins, your spirit is saved instantaneously, without works, by grace. But your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, that you can walk in God's ways and word by renewing your mind, okay, which is part of your soul, is with the Word of God. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. James 1.21. 22. But become doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and is not, and is not a doer, he is like a man studying his natural face in a mirror. For he studied himself and went his way and immediately forgot what he was like. But whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, he is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one shall be blessed in his doing. How do you get be blessed? You look into the Word of God. What does the Word of God say about you? What did Jesus do for you? You died in Christ, Galatians 2.20. He didn't just die for you. Praise God, he did. So our sins are forgiven. But he changed us. We're new creatures in Christ. That's in Corinthians, okay? New creatures. You've got to keep looking into this Word receiving it, and it changes you. And this is how we are blessed. All right, let's go to James chapter 2 and read 19 through 26. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see how faith worked with his works? And from works, faith was made complete. And the scripture was filled, fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. And you see how a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Okay, once again, you believe in Jesus that he died for your sins. Faith. No works. You're saved spiritually. But we're not talking about basic salvation. We're talking about walking in God's word, in his ways, so that you can be blessed and have your soul saved, your mind renewed, so you can know God's will and be blessed. Verse 25. And in the same way was not Rehab, the harlot also justified. Rahab, I don't know how to pronounce his name, her name. Rahab, the harlot justified by works, when she'd received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Here is proof that James isn't just... Some people say, Steve, you can't use James for the church. But well, here's a good reason why we can. Rahab was a Gentile. She didn't, was saved just by faith, but she had works with her faith as a Gentile. As a Gentile. 
So yes, we can use James. We're not just spirit beings, folks. We also have souls. You're not going to tell me, well, that's just for the Jews. We also have souls. We're spirit, soul, and body. Verse 26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, if you want to understand about dead works, okay? There are people who produce dead works, like some of those, Jesus said, you did these works, but I never knew you. Some of it is dead works, religious works, okay? For more about that, because I'm not going to talk more about that here, for more about that, see my video here, Table in the Wilderness, Repentance from Dead Works. Now let's talk about what Paul says in Corinthians, because we're going to stand before the Lord, and we're going to be judged for our works. We're not going to be judged by the Lord who are saved, whether we're saved or not, we're going to be judged if our works were of God and if they bore eternal fruit. Paul speaks of this in 1 Corinthians 3. We're going to read 1 through 15, skipping almost half of the verses. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians 3, 1. And I, brothers, could not speak to you as spiritual ones, but as to fleshly, as to babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with solid food. For you are not able to hear it, nor are you able, able even now. So Paul's saying, I can't give you meat of God's word. I have to give you spiritual milk. There's a maturity that these Christians in Corinthians, in Corinth, needed to grow in Christ. Okay? Just like us, we need to grow in Christ. So many of you are babes in Christ. Carnal, right here. And my brothers cannot speak to you as spiritual ones, but as to fleshly, as to babes in Christ. For I have fed you with milk and not with solid food, for you are not able to hear it, nor are you able to even now. For you are yet carnal, verse 3, and that there is among you envyings and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and do not walk according to men? So many people in the church today walk, even though they're saved, walked as those who are not saved. What was this woman telling me? That my, I wouldn't be forgiven by the children because I wouldn't give her money? Walking carnally, walking carnally. Skipping down to verse 11. For any other foundation can no one lay than the one being laid who is Jesus Christ. And if anyone builds on this foundation, okay? So we're talking about working in, working a ministry, walking your life. You don't have to necessarily have to ministry of preaching and teaching, but as a Christian, you're walking in your daily life. You need to walk in the Spirit and minister to people around you. Not necessarily with just God's Word. Some of you are not preachers. Some of you just minister God's ways by being godly to people around you. Okay, Whatever ministry you have, it's all working. And what are those works going to produce? All right. Verse 12 again. And if anyone builds on this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble... Each one's work shall be revealed, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try each one's work as to what kind it is. If anyone's work which he built remains, he shall receive a reward. If anyone's work shall be burned up, he shall suffer loss, but he shall be saved, yet so as by fire. I'm going to talk a little bit about this, but if you want a fuller teaching on this judgment of the Christians, it's called the judgment seat of Christ. That word seat is the word bima. So sometimes it's called the bima seat judgment. You can see my video here on the bima seat judgment of Christ. But briefly, okay, we're going to stand before God and all our works, the words, the words we spoke, you know, in our ministry, in our lives, the, the, the kindness acts that we've done, all the works that we've done, they're going to be judged by fire. Gold, silver, and precious stones will survive the fire but wood, hay, and stubble will burn up. If anyone's work remains, you will remain in the kingdom. But if all your works are burned up, not all, not just some, okay? All, I'm sure every one of us are going to have some work burned up because we're not perfect. We're not Christ. But if all your works are burned up, then Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Okay? Please see my other video on the Bema Seat Judgment. I probably got like three or four, but I linked to one earlier. So how do you manifest works that produce fruit and rewards? Because all those works will produce rewards. If your works survive the fire, you will be given rewards 
for your work. If your work was perfect, gold, you'll be given bigger or glorious, more glorious works, or silver and precious stones. Jesus says in another parable, 30, 60, and 100 fold. So we have different levels of walking in God's word and his ways. So even if it's just precious stones, not gold or silver, it's still eternal and you will receive rewards for it. So how do you do this work? How do you work in God's will and ways? James 1.25 Whoever looks into the perfect law, we read this earlier, so I'm, I'm refreshing you. Whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, he, and he is not a forgetful hearer, but is a doer of the work, this one shall be blessed in his doing. So first, you renew your mind, right? You Then you get in God's word, you receive it, looking into what God's word says, who you are, and walk in it. And then you will be blessed. Philippians 2.12. We didn't read this earlier, but we'll add this now. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. This is Paul, the preacher to the Gentiles, saying this to the Philippians. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. This is not our basic salvation of the Spirit. You believe in Jesus, he died for your sins, you're saved eternally without works. You don't have to work that out, it's done. But our salvation of our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. Let's read that again. I want you to get this. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Remember James 1.21? I'll read, I'm going to read it again. I'll do it now. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superflu superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. This is how we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We look at God's word, we receive God's word, and we walk in what it says. We are new creatures in Christ. Again, that's in Corinthians. I'll put the verse on the screen if I haven't already. And Romans 12, 1 and 2. We read this earlier. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Let me get a drink. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind in order to prove by you what is that good and pleasing and perfect will of God. We save our souls. We get into God's word. We save our mind, renew our mind with God's word. And this is how we learn God's will for our lives, that we may be blessed. We need milk, meat, not milk. We need meat, not milk to grow. As he, we read in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 2. And I, brothers, could not speak to you as spiritual ones, but as to fleshly, as to babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with solid food, for you were not able to bear it nor are you able to bear it even now. The writer of Hebrews speaks about this milk and meat. Hebrews 5, 13 and 14. For everyone partaking of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, even those who because of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Let me give you an example. Many of these people in Pakistan and India and Africa will say, Steve, I want to show you some pictures of the orphans I care of. They're trying to appeal to my senses, showing me poor orphan children. But what does Hebrews 5, 14 says? Who because of their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. They're trying to reach my soul, my feelings, not the spirit. They're trying to manipulate me through spirit not spiritual ways, but through soulish ways by showing me pictures. But I tell them, it doesn't matter how many pictures you show me, you're not going to change my mind. I'm already ministering with a ministry in Pakistan to help orphans and widows. I don't have a lot of money. I'm not manu moved, maneuvered by your soulish means, your pictures, your begging. I, I minister by the Spirit. Yes, I do give to orphans. I do believe in that. But I'm going to minister to those, because I found a man of God, 
who's not interested in money, who's operating by the Spirit, and I donate to his ministry in Pakistan, and he helps the orphans and the widows. He doesn't just give them food, but he teaches them God's word and ways. What happens if your senses are not exercised or you don't have maturity? We'll go back to James. We'll go to James 3. James is awesome for all this kind of stuff. James 3, we're going to 10 through 18. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a fountain send forth at the same hole the sweet and the bitter? Can the fig tree, my brothers, bear olive berries or a vine or a vine? Or figs? So no fountain can yield both salt water and fresh. Who is wise and knowing among you? Let him show his works by his good conduct and with meekness of wisdom. Is it wisdom to show pictures of orphan poor children? Are you operating by the Spirit? No. But if you have bitter jealousy and strife in your hearts, do you not glory and lie against the truth? So many of these people come to me. Why can't you give to me? Why are you giving to others? Envy and strife. They're not trusting in God. They're trusting in man. And by begging, if I can get this person to give to me, all will be well. But they're trusting in their begging and, their, and these people in the West who have money more than they do, to do the work they're doing. They're not trusting in God. Verse 15. This is not the wisdom coming down from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Devilish. You see, God, the Holy Spirit, comes and lives in our spirit. But where do demons live when they possess the ungodly? How do demons operate? Do they operate through men's spirits? No. Demons operate through man's soul. You've heard of psychics? That word psychic comes from the Greek word suke, which is where we get the word soul. Okay? Soul. So whenever you see the word, like Jesus says in, in, in the New Testament, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you must deny your soul to save it, that word soul in Greek in the Bible is the word suke. That's where we get the word psyche, psychics. Okay, these are people whose de demons speak to their souls and reveal information. Where God, when He reveals information to those in the church, it's through the Spirit and through spiritual gifts. Let's read 15 and 16 again. James 3. This is not the wisdom coming down from above but as earthly, sensual, devilish. For where, where envying and strife are, there is confusion in every foul deed. But the wisdom that is from above is first truly pure, then peaceable, gentle, easily to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. This speaks about there are people who will argue with, with you about doctrines. There are so many people out there who don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, and they manifest these fruits. They don't come in peace or love and gentleness, but they come in hypocrisy. They come in anger, strife, bitterness. So where is their wisdom coming from? It's not coming from the Spirit. It's not coming from the Spirit. If you find yourself in these attributes, you have to recognize you're in your soul. And how to get your soul saved? In God's Word. Verse 17, But the wisdom which is from above is first pure, truly pure, then peaceable, gentle, easily to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Verse 18, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, by those who make peace. Now, to understand there's a difference between spirit and soul is why I put this next verse in. Hebrews 4.12. Let's see if I can do it, speak it by memory. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, 
joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and tents of the heart. I think I got it right, but as I said it from memory, I put it on the screen. That is the King James Version. The reason I know that so well is the Bible school I went to, the, one of the men of God who, who started the church, he has a book called Marismos, where he teaches about spirit and soul. And that word Marismos is found right there in Hebrews 4.12. It is the Greek word dividing asunder. So if you want to know more about the spirit and the soul, okay? Again, spirit is your eternal part. And it is, that is where it, you, that will go into eternity, okay? You will be spiritually alive forever, whether it's in heaven, the kingdom of God, or in the lake of fire. It's your spirit. It's your spirit that's saved by what Jesus did. When you believe that he died for your sins, your spirit is saved instantly. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It is saved by the word of God receiving it. To learn more about the spirit soul, because I'm not going to go more any deeper in it here, you can see my video here. It's a table in the wilderness, spirit versus soul. In conclusion, how can we produce fruitful works and be blessed? James 1.25, a third time. I want you to get this. Whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, he is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one shall be blessed in his doing. James 2.26 Faith without works is dead. 1 Corinthians 3.14 and 15 If anyone's work which he built remains, your work has to remain, the fruit thereof at the judgment, he shall receive a reward. If anyone's work shall be burned up, he shall suffer loss, but he shall be saved yet so as by fire. Those who are thrown into outside the kingdom can keep their salvation, but they will also go through the wine press judgment. If you want to learn more about the wine press judgment, you can find that video here. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. If you want that good work to do his will, and to be pleasing in his sight, you have to walk in these ways and God will bless you. He will give you what you need to do in your life, in your ministry, whatever it is. Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you're seeking to walk in righteousness, and peace and joy, and the things of the Spirit, you will be filled. Third, last verse. This is an amazing verse. Third John 1, 2, Beloved, in regard to all things, I pray that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. See, we're going to prosper and be in health, not as our spirit is, because that's instantaneously when you believe in Jesus. But remember what Paul said in Philippians, I think it was 2.10? Seek your salvation with fear and trembling, okay? And then, by saving your soul, you will prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Well, that's it, folks. I hope you understand the importance of walking in God's ways and in God's will in your ministries. Again, when I say ministry, I understand some of you aren't preachers. But if you believe in Christ, you have a ministry. It might just be telling Jesus, that, telling your neighbors Jesus loves them. It might be just telling, helping your neighbor bring their groceries in, into the house. But you're not going to do it by dead works. You're going to do it by the Spirit. You're going to do it by love. Whatever it is that you do, do it in the Spirit. Do it God's ways. And if there's something you need in your life to walk in God's ways, make sure you're walking in His will for your life by renewing your mind so you know what God's will is for you. These are the secrets of being blessed. So you don't have to trust in men or soulish ways to operate in what God has for you that you might be blessed, yes, with some money, with some items, not for your lusts, but that you can walk in God's will and He provides everything you need in your life so that you're in His will doing what you are supposed to be doing by His calling in your life. Well, that's it, folks. We'll see you again soon, Lord willing. God bless. 
Have a good day. Bye-bye.